and she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's like, delivering a body for you, for you to, for you to feed to your pigs. Hello, my shiny babies. Hello, my besties. I am filming this at nighttime. So if the lighting is a little bit, como se dice, not good, that's why. We're just gonna have to deal with it because let me explain what's been happening to me lately. All day, dead, dead. I'm just laying in bed like, I don't wanna get up. I just wanna lay all day. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like 7 p.m. It's like 8 p.m. And I'm like, energy, more energy, more passion, more footwork. And then I just like have so much energy until like 4 a.m. So I've been having so much energy, but only at night. Anyway, nobody cares. Nobody cares. We don't need to explain that ourselves. Today, I am going to be telling you every single book I read in the month of Febru February. February is such a weird month to pronounce. I really hate it. Like February, 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 February. It's giving Nick Miller. I really just don't know how to pronounce it that well. Anyway, month of Feb. I read 18 books in the month of February and I will say the beginning of the month was a little bit eh, but then the end of the month, I read a lot. So I'm gonna be telling you which books I read, a little bit about each of them, what I rated them and how I read these books. No spoilers in any of these videos as per usual. Here we go. I'm gonna start with three books that are on a reading vlog. So if you want to see exactly what I thought as I was reading these books without spoilers, go watch this reading vlog. It's my Valentine's Day one where I read your favorite romance books. And it was these three right here. We've got Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. Then we've got The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. And then we've got Betting on You by Lynn Pintor. And um, these three apparently are some of your favorite romance books of all time. And I, I read them. I did that. Let, let's tell you what they're about. <laughs> Words are very difficult for me today. I don't know what's going on, but I just feel like singing. Maybe I should sing this whole video. I read these three books. Let's discuss. Let's talk about it. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do Oh my god, I'm singing Olivia Rodrigo soon. I think, hold on, I think March 16th is my concert here in Milwaukee. I'm so excited. Also, March, we have Sweetgrass as well, which is an author event, and I'm going. Okay, so first up, Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is the second book in her series with When in Rome and then Practice Makes Perfect. You don't need to read them both. You can just read this one or you can just read When in Rome, whatever you would like. This follows Annie and Will. And is it dual POV? I feel like it is, but it is. Okay, basically Will's a bodyguard. Annie is, a, she owns a flower shop in the small town that they're at and she needs some help in the dating department, okay? Annie does not know what the fuck she's doing. And who better to help her than the bad boy bodyguard? Guard. Will. Of course, no strings attached. Nothing could ever happen between them. They will never catch feelings. That's such a great idea. And that's basically what it is. It's grumpy sunshine. It is small town. It's he tutors her in dating, that kind of thing. It was so fucking cute. I don't know why I loved it so much because I didn't love when in Rome all that much. So I expected myself to like this, but to not obsess over it. Kind of like how I was with when in Rome. No, no, this was so good. This was so cute. All of Sarah Adams's books are like closed door. So there's no spice in them, which I really, really enjoy. The cheat sheet is still my favorite by her, but I really, really liked this. So I rated Practice Makes Perfect four stars. Such a fluffy, fun read if you want something to just kind of get your mind off of life. I would recommend. Then Betting on You by Lynn Painter follows Charlie and Bailey. It's also duo POV. And I'm pretty sure this is a YA, so also no spice on this one. This is co-workers, friends to lovers, a little bit of fake dating. There's a lot of different tropes in this book. It's really hard to explain. So basically it's like when Harry met Sally, but like a YA modern different version kind of thing. <laughs> That's essentially what this is because they make a bet that women and men cannot just be friends, that something will always happen. And that is a essentially what this book is about. There's a lot of different subplots, I will say. There, there were so many different things going on that I don't really want to explain too much because I don't want to give it away, but that's the premise of it. And they meet at an airport a long, long time ago, and then they meet again when they become co-workers. So they have an adorable me cute. The me cute is, is cuting it up. It is so, so adorable. I really, really enjoyed it. One of my favorite Lynn Painter books, I will say. I think you guys will like it. If you like better than the movies by her, I think you will really like this book. I gave this one a four stars as well. And this one I listened to, and I really, really liked the audiobook. So if you're an audiobook girly, listening to this one would be essential. Incredible. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I rated it four stars. <laughs> Then The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poisson, I would say this is literally one of the most popular romance books right now. Everyone is obsessed with it. Everyone and their mothers and their squirrels and their cats and their dogs and their laundry really, really loves this book. And so I wanted to give it a shot. I'm pretty sure it's only told by her POV. It follows Clementine and Ewan. And, and this is a really interesting plot, okay? Listen to the plot. It's iconic. Essentially, 
Clementine and Ewan live seven years apart from each other. They meet, but he is seven years in the past and she is seven years in the future. I don't really know how to explain that besides telling you that. It's such a weird concept that's really hard to explain. Imagine the movie Just Like Heaven. It reminded me of that. It reminded me of that kind of energy. Like, look, she moves into her late aunt's apartment and finds a strange man in the kitchen. And he's the type of man that she would fall for, except he exists in the past. Seven years in the past to be exact. And she quite literally lives seven years in the future. Okay, so I explained that pretty well. The apartment is magical. He lives seven years in the past. She lives seven years in the future. So, yep, that's all I will tell you because I feel like going into this book kind of blindly is pretty good. It was a very, very cute book. And I really, really enjoyed the love story. And I loved the plot. It just wasn't my favorite. I don't know why it didn't captivate me as much as everybody else. I really liked the couple and I really liked them separate and everything. I just didn't feel like the passion for them like I wanted to. I was cheered for them for sure, but I wasn't like, oh my God, if they don't end up together, I'm going to die and cry and throw up, you know? And that's the kind of feeling I want to get from a romance book. And I didn't feel that way, but I did have a lot of fun with it. It was definitely a very good book and I really liked the writing. So I ended up rating this one 3.75. Good, but not my favorite. So all those three books are in the Valentine's Day vlog if you want to go see more. Next up, I read When Gracie Met the Grump by Mariana Zapata. This was officially the last Mariana Zapata book I was saving. It was the recent one, like the, the latest one she wrote. And I just was not ready to read it yet because MZ is one of my favorite authors. It She is my favorite author. She's number one for me. If you want to go watch a full MZ video, I just made one where I ranked all of the books. You can go watch it. But anyway, I left this one. I left this one. It was waiting for me and it was officially time. I finally read the book and you know what? I had a fabulous, fabulous time of my life fighting dragons with you. Long live all the mountains we moved. I had the time of my life fighting dragons with you. Anyway, where did I get long live from? Like how did I pull Taylor Swift out of thin air? I have such a talent with that. If there's one thing I can always do is bring a Taylor Swift when Taylor Swift was not involved whatsoever. <laughs> anyway, um, this book follows Gracie. Yep. Uh-huh. And the grub. All of MZ's books are only told from the women's POV. So this is only from Gracie's and essentially she's just at home minding her business, vibing, living her life. Okay. And a man all of a sudden crashes into her yard and he's a superhero. And she's like, oh me, oh my, now I must help this superhero survive because he quite literally is unconscious. Yeah. That's it. How fun is that? It gives Marvel, but like romance. You know, we all know Marvel likes to kill us with the romance. They don't like to give us happy endings. You know, only some people get happy endings. Others, like our favorites, <laughs> like Iron Man, <laughs> don't, don't get happy endings. No, nope, no, nope. because Marvel cannot do that to us. They cannot love us 3000, even though we love them 3000. This is like Marvel, but make it romance. Make it sweet, make it beautiful. Make it a slow burn though. If you guys are looking for something quick, if you're looking for something that's just gonna like get you right away, like Insta love or, you know, spicy, like any of that, that's not the book for you you. None of MZ's books are spicy to me at least because they only like have spice. I would say like the last chapters. So that's not a spicy book, you know? Um, it's also not closed door, but it's not spicy. I really enjoy this. Is it my favorite MZ book? No, but that's because that spot is saved for five other ones that you can see in my ranking video. <laughs> Shameless plug. Anyway, but I really liked it. Four stars for this one. I really, really had a good time with Gracie and the Grub. It definitely just took me a little second to get into it. I, I feel like I had to read a couple chapters, like a solid, I would say like, 50 pages before I really became invested. But once I did, I really enjoyed this book. So four stars for when Gracie met the Grump, four stars for Gracie, four stars for Grump, four stars for me, four stars for MZ. I think the reason why I'm so all over the place, okay, so I'm filming this on Monday. So my weekend, my weekend was a mess. Let me just tell you guys, I laid in bed and had like anxiety attacks all weekend. So I, I, I'm struggling, you know what I mean? Like I'm just tired, I feel exhausted. I don't know if you guys ever had, I hope you haven't, but if you have, I'm so sorry. I feel for you, we are, we're all in this together. You know what I mean? High school musical. That's us. If you guys have ever had that, you just get so tired afterwards. And that's me. So I'm trying to recover. So if my words are not wording correctly, like that's not my fault. You know what I mean? That's not my fault. Why would you say that? You know, that puts me in a really uncomfortable situation. You know, I'm not happy. I hope you guys know that sound or else I just sound stupid. The next book I read was an audiobook format. It's Bride by Allie Hazelwood. Usually, okay, what the fuck is that? Usually Allie Hazelwood books, I like to listen to the audiobook because I feel like she does a really good job picking the narrators and I just really, really like them. And Allie Hazelwood's not an author that I'm so obsessed with that I have to read like the physical book or the Kindle book or what have you, but then I still buy the physical copies. So who's really losing here? Me. This, oh my God, you guys, who was gonna tell me that this quite literally feels like the originals? It feels like the originals, okay? If you've watched Vampire Diaries, well, if you've watched Vampire Diaries, ignore that because that has nothing to do with this. Watch the originals. <laughs> 
which is the spinoff of Vampire Diaries and much better in my personal opinion. Anyway, if you watch that show, then this gives that. Like this gives when Haley, oh, I don't want to spoil it for you, but this gives Haley and the whole situation with Jackson. I'll leave you with that. Essentially, there's this girly right here and she's a vampire and she has to marry a wolf, like for political reasons. Their species do not get along, but she has to get married to him. So it's like an arranged marriage and it's fantasy and it's werewolf vampire. And it's a little bit of like supposed to be enemies to lovers, but not really all that much. And it's all from her POV. You get little glimpses into his mind, but it's pretty much all her POV. And then there's like also a little mystery throughout the way, which I was really, really focusing on that. I really enjoyed that part. Vampire Bride, an alpha werewolf, a dangerous alliance in this enthralling new paranormal romance. Dun, 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 dun. Her name is Misery, which I will say, I didn't really love that. It was giving, I'm in the business of misery. Let's take it from the top. Let's not waste time. Let's not waste time. Let's stop doing that. I really, really liked this. Now, I thought I was going to like it. I really enjoy pretty much everything Ali Hazelwood writes, but this was different from her. I've been waiting for her to do something different because I feel like she always does like women in STEM, which love because same, I was a woman in STEM, but like she always sticks to that format and I wanted her to do something new. And she gave that to me with this book. She listened. She was like, I'm going to give you something completely, completely out of left field. You know, it's cold out here in left field because Ali Hazelwood has left me here. Really, really liked it. I wouldn't say I loved it as much as everybody else did. Like people have been obsessing over this book. I read it at four stars. Okay, I really liked it, but it's not my favorite Ali Here's a Wood book. I would say Love Theoretically is probably my favorite Ali Here's a Wood, but this one was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. And I, like I said, the mystery behind it and like the alliance and werewolves versus vampires, like it just gave, it gave the originals. It gave like some parts of it gave like, ah, I don't want to tell you. I really don't want to ruin the originals for you because if you haven't watched it, please go watch it. Please go watch it. It's so fucking good. Klaus Michelson is everything to me and I will die on that hill. So I liked it. Four stars. As you can see, four stars is like my default. When I like a book, it's four stars. You know, three stars is usually, I enjoyed it, but it's not everything to me. But if I liked it a lot, it's four stars. I save my five stars for my absolute favorite books, you know? Then I read My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. I don't know why their names are not here. I have this special edition of this book. Look how beautiful it is. Look at that. Oh, hello. I just realized that this is gorgeous. I'm pretty sure it's LJ Shen and Parker S. Huntington. I've read both of those authors before and I really liked them. So I wanted to read their work together. How beautiful. You're my favorite plot twist. This book follows Romeo in Dallas and it is dual POV. It's not like mafia, but he's like a super rich, morally gray man, but he's not like killing people left and right. You know what I mean? So it, it's it's not mafia, but it feels like mafia, if that makes sense. Anyway, he's just a billionaire guy and she lives in like this town where it's like old school. It reminds me of Bridgerton, okay? Where like the women have to be like courted and they have to stay a virgin till marriage and like all of that stuff, like a very old school town. And uh, one night they're at a party together and she's promised to the this other guy, but then she gets caught kissing Romeo. And so she has to marry him instead. So it's like a forced marriage. It's enemies to lovers. And when I say enemies to lovers, I mean actual enemies to lovers. This guy's a dick. <laughs> He's so fucking mean, but it was really funny. Like she had me cackling. Anyway, I hated this book and I DNF'd it. <laughs> said I did not finish. I got up to, let me just tell you, I got up to like 200 pages, I would say. Like I read like this much and then I called it quits because I, I don't know what happened. I was on a roll with this book. I read the first 50% like this. I was loving it. I was having the time of my life. All of a sudden, lost interest. I don't know what happened. I could not tell you. Like it felt kind of like a copy and paste of Bridgerton. Like it just felt like they were trying too hard to be like that, which I didn't like. And then it felt repetitive. Like in the beginning, I really loved their enemies to lovers banter. And I loved her. She was so funny and he was such a dick and I really enjoyed that. But then it just kept going the same thing to the point that I just, I couldn't do it anymore. You lost me. You know what I mean? Like you didn't change shit up. I'm bored now. So there's nothing I, I have completely against this book. I just could not finish. So I'm not reading it because I don't rate DNFs, but you know, very pretty cover. So I'm glad I have it on my shelf. <laughs> Next up, I read Fierce Obsession by S. Mastery. This is a new book that just came out. It's part of her Hockey God series. Um, if you want it, the order of the series, Brutal Obsession, Devious Obsession, Secret Obsession, then Twisted Obsession, and then Fierce Obsession. I believe that that's correct. If I'm wrong, you know what? Just, just ignore me, ignore me. But I think that's right. Anyway, they're all interconnected standalones. You don't even have to fucking read them in order if you don't want to. It all follows a hockey team 
team and it's all the guys from that team and it's all dual POV and all very dark hockey romances. Search up your trigger warnings. Oh my goodness me, search up your trigger warnings. Take them seriously because these are very, very dark. I would say these are some of the darkest books I've ever read. Like so fucking unhinged, so crazy. I hate this one up and I don't know what that says about me. Knox and Aurora, dual POV. He and her got married a long time ago and he has not given my girl a divorce and she's trying to move on, okay? Who should try to move on with? The goalie on his hockey team. <laughs> Hockey has a goalie doesn't mean you can't score. <laughs> Let's remember that I am the baddest boy. She's trying to move on with the goalie on his hockey team, but he will not give her a fucking divorce. That, that is essentially it. They're just obsessed. The guys in this series are just obsessed with the girls and that is the plot. <laughs> Maybe that's why I love it so much because I love me a good obsession. I love Unhinged. I don't know why this was my favorite one out of the series. I could not tell you, but I had a lovely time with this one. I really, really liked it. It felt so romantic. It had like past present POV kind of vibes. I loved their connection and it was crazy, but like almost not as crazy as the other ones, which is why I was able to handle it so well. I don't know. I don't really know. It just had something in it that really just pulled me in. So four stars for Fierce Obsession. I really, really enjoyed this. I feel like the series ended perfectly. All of these books are very dark, so search up your trigger warnings, but if you're going to go into them, good luck. Yeah. That, that's what I'll say. Next, I read Gothicana by Runix. This one follows Vad and Corvina, and it is dual POV, if I am not mistaken. And it is in third person. All of Runix's books are in third person for some odd reason. It's teacher-student. So he is essentially her teacher. So there's an age gap. It's not like a weird age gap, so don't you worry. But it is age gap. It is dark, so search for trigger warnings. And it is like dark academia, mystery kind of vibes. You are in this college, and there's a lot of mystery going on. I really just just don't want to tell you. Go into it pretty blindly because I did and that was my favorite part about this book. I had so much fun with the mystery. I had no fun with anything else. I don't know what it was but I didn't like it. <laughs> Like everybody loves this book. I feel like this is such an unpopular opinion. I rated this two stars. I read the entire thing. I didn't DNF it. And it has almost 500 pages. It's 450 pages. And I was really intrigued by the mystery in it. But I just did not care for anything else. I, I didn't care for Corvina. I didn't care for Vad. I didn't care for their relationship together. I didn't feel like they had like chemistry. I felt like they had definitely like lust. I didn't feel their love. You know what I mean? And when I don't feel that in a romance book, I just don't care for it at all. You know, like I was really really intrigued by the plot and the mystery, like I said, but that wasn't enough to keep me going throughout the whole book. So I just, I felt bored throughout the whole thing. It just disappointed me, but you know what? Dark Verse series by Runix is everything to me. So you win some, you lose some. I lost this one, but I won with Dark Verse. If you're gonna read Runix, read the Dark Verse series by her. It's incredible. You will die dead. You will love it so much. It was not good to me. Don't let that discourage you from reading it because a lot of people love it. Like I said, definitely an unpopular opinion. And I love Runix dearly. So definitely give it a try but two stars for me. I'm sorry, you're so beautiful. I'm glad I have you on my shelf anyway. I still want that special edition cover that like has the hardback with like the purple edges. It looks so beautiful. I still want to put that on my shelf. Clearly I didn't hate it that much, you know? It's just a, just a two star. It's fine. Two stars, it's okay. Next, let's talk about The Pucking Wrong Date by C.R. Jane. This is also a recent release. This is part of the Pucking Wrong series by her. So you have the Pucking Wrong number, the Pucking Wrong guy, and then the Pucking Wrong date. That is the order, but you don't need to read them in that order if you don't want to. They're all interconnected standalones. Also all follow guys in a hockey team. Also dark romance. I don't know what I was on this month because why did I do both of these? <laughs> Like I was on a dark romance hockey kick kind of vibe. This follows Walker and Olivia and it is dual POV and he is the goalie for a hockey team and Olivia is a fallen pop star, okay? Let me tell you why I liked it so much. You're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh at my face. You're gonna be like, Larry, what the fuck? I was thinking like Taylor and Travis because she's like a pop star and he's an athlete. When you have that kind of dynamic, I'm immediately gonna think that even though it was nothing like that. But just because one was an athlete and one was a pop star, that's where my brain went, okay? This book is so unhinged this series. Search up your trigger warnings for this series and remember them as you're reading, okay? Because they, it gets crazy. In the first book, like the first half, I was like, oh, this is not dark at all. Oh boy. Oh boy, was I wrong because that book is so dark. Like all of these are so, so dark and they are fucking insane. Like the men are so obsessed and so crazy and they'll do anything for the women, which makes them even more unhinged. Beware. Don't say I didn't warn you, okay? You read it if you want to. This was my favorite in the series though, I will say. Like I just loved this book so 
so fucking much. I rated it four stars. Like the first book I rated 3.5 and then the second one I rated four and this one I'm also rating four. This one was my favorite, but the character from the second one is my favorite guy. Ari is still my favorite guy. He cannot be topped. But this book just did it for me. Like the dynamic, the plot, the like relationship, everything about it really got me. And I was kicking my feet and screaming at the romance, but then I was also giggling at the found family and like the text messages and the team, which just made it for me. So I, I really, really liked it. If you're just gonna read one, I would say this is the one. But low key, Pucking Wrong Guy, so good. My mom's favorite is Pucking Wrong Number because she likes like tortured and trauma kind of thing. And that's what you get from that book. I'm more of like a funny dynamic kind of person. So Pucking Wrong Guy did it for me in this one. Four stars, I rated this four stars. Start to put your good winnings. So, so good, but <laughs> not for everyone. Then I read the most fucked up book of all time. It, it just, it warped my mind like no other. The Teacher by Frida McFadden. This is Frida McFadden's newest book. And you guys know I go through her entire backlist. I read all of her books. So of course I had to read The Teacher. Now, the last couple of Frida McFadden books I read were not my favorite. I feel like she has a certain formula, I would say, for her books. And when you read one, you kind of start picking up what's going on in every single one. So that bores me because I'm the kind of person that with a thriller, I need the twist to be good or else I'm not gonna be as invested, you know? Some people really just like the thriller for the story of it. And I do like that as well, but I need the twist to be good or else I'm not, I'm not gonna like it. You know what I mean? So picking up the teacher, I did not have high expectations because like I said, the past like five Freedom McFadden books were not my favorite, but this one, all I'm gonna tell you is that it follows Eve and it follows Addie. One is a student, one is a teacher. That's it, go into it just knowing that. This book was so fucking crazy. Like up until the last moment, I had no idea what was going on. Like I really just thought the story was going one place and it went completely a different place. And I just, I. That's all I'm gonna tell you. I wanted to pick up this book and throw it across the room. Chuck it, just throw it because that's how fucking insane it was and how much it got me. Wow, I really liked it. I really, really liked it. Four stars for sure for the teacher. It's not my favorite Freedom McFadden book because Never Lies all the way up there. It's it's unbeatable for me, but this one came pretty damn close, I will say. And for her newest release, that shocks me because like I told you, I haven't been loving all the other ones. Like I didn't love The Coworker. I didn't like the latest ones I've been reading, which is like One by One, The Locked Door. Like I didn't love any of those, but this one, what? What? Yes. Yes. Four stars for the teacher. Go read it. If it's your first thriller, I am so excited for you. If you read Freda McFadden a lot, this one is kind of different. So you might really like it or you might hate it. I will say. Search up your trigger warnings. I don't know if people search up trigger warnings for thrillers or not because all thrillers have so much trigger warnings and they could spoil the book if you're going to search them up. So I don't really know what thriller readers do. So you just do what you do, okay? Do whatever makes you feel better. Let me know what you think. Four stars for me. I really liked it. Speaking of Freda McFadden, I also read The Perfect Sun by her. I read this on Kindle, so I do not have the paperback. Are you proud of me or what? That I read it on Kindle and I didn't buy the paperback. Come on now. Round of applause. Eventually I'll probably buy it, but <laughs> get this. This follows a woman named Erica. <gasps> my mom's name, Eureka. I call my mom Eureka on the internet all the time. And like, that's my nickname for her. Let me, did I tell you the story? Did I ever tell you why? Let me tell you why. So this is why I call my mom Eureka. Okay. One night I was having a sleepover with one of my friends and I was being so loud watching the OC. And in the OC, Seth had just told Ryan, he was like, Eureka, Ryan, Eureka. And I was screaming Eureka. I was like, Eureka. And my mom came in the middle of the night, her hair like all messed up. She was like a zombie, like literally a Sleep. She picked up her chancletas and she was like, shh, and threw it at the wall for me to shut up. And I was like, Eureka, mom, Eureka. And it was one of the funniest moments of my life. Like, I'll never forget it. I laughed so fucking hard. I couldn't go to sleep afterwards because I just kept laughing, imagining her coming and just throwing a shoe at a random wall. <laughs> like, what was she doing? If she had at least thrown the shoe, like, in my direction. No, 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 no. She just threw it, like, just to be like, shh. Besides the point, The Perfect Son follows Erica, which is my mom's actual name. And she's living her best life until one day two detectives show up at her door and they're like, hey, this young woman disappeared and like your son was the last person to see her alive. Yeah, this was very predictable to me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I rated it 3.5 because I really liked the story and I loved the epilogue. The epilogue got me, but the rest was so predictable. The entire time I was like, yeah, uh-huh. I know exactly what happened and I did and I did know what happened but I still had a good time because Freedom McFadden books are still always fun for me so 3.5 not my favorite but fun. Then I read The Wrong Wife by Maya Alden. This is one of those books that I think you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I was a little bit in the middle. Okay, listen, it follows Declan and Esme and Declan essentially marries his ex fiance's sister. Yeah, so The Wrong Wife. Okay, it's like a little bit of an arranged marriage kind of thing and a little bit of enemies to lovers, at least from like his POV. He's definitely, definitely an asshole. Like in the first 10% I was like, I'm going to DNF this, but I pushed through and I ended up actually really enjoying it. I listened to this one on audiobook. If I was reading 
the Kindle version. I don't know how I would feel about it, but because I was listening to it, I kept going and the story got really good. I don't know if it got really good or I just got really involved, but I really, really did. It wasn't the kind of book that I'm like, oh my God, you must read this right now. You have to read it. You drop everything now. Like it wasn't Boys of Tom to me, but it also wasn't the book that I'm like, never read that book, you know, like Credence vibes. It was pretty much in the middle. I rated it 3.5. There were some scenes that I really, really loved and I was like swooning and then some scenes that I hated, but I would still recommend. Like, you know what I mean? If you're in the mood for it, I would say this is a good one, but if you're not in the mood, you're gonna hate it, you know? So 3.5, the audiobook is really, really good. I love it when narrators are good and they just get you hooked, you know what I mean? Cause then I could just listen to any kind of book. Could be the worst book ever and I'll be like, oh my God, that was good. Cause the narrator just got me. <laughs> Then I read Love Contract by my queen, Sophie Lark. This is literally Sophie's first book. That's not like the darkest thing ever. That's like just a sweet fake dating book. Who's shocked? Oh my God, I ate it up. I ate it up. I feel like that's exactly what I needed for the moment that I read it. I picked it up at the perfect moment. It follows Theo and it follows Sullivan and it's dual POV and they knew each other in high school, but he was like the super popular guy and she was the quiet nerdy girl. So she thought like she did not exist to him at all. And they did not really talk whatsoever. And now it is a year years, years later, and he comes up to her and he's like, hey, let's fake date because I need something from your boss. And she's like, excuse me, sir? Absolutely fucking not. But then she realizes what a good idea it is. So for mutual reasons, they start fake dating. So it is a fake dating series. Like Sophie's having three books in this series and all of them are gonna be fake dating. How fun is that? One of my favorite tropes. So it is like, not childhood friends, but like childhood knowing each other. High school, knowing each other to lovers, like they've known each other a long time, but then they became strangers and then they met each other later again. It is fake dating, it is sweet, it is fluffy, but of course, of course there's some, some little spice in there because it is Sophie, what are we talking, you know? I've never said that before. What are we talking? What does that even mean? What are we talking? <laughs> I really liked this. I rated it four stars. This is like one of my favorite Sophie books. The Sinner's Duet will always be my number one. I don't know if that'll be able to be topped and then Brutal Prince right after that. But right after that, it would be Love Contract. I really, really liked it. I'm excited to see the rest of the series because it's set up for the other couples. I will be there. I'm sat. I am sat. I really liked it. If this doesn't convince you to read it, let me tell you this quote. Are you ready? This man, this man, she goes, my favorite color is purple. And he's like, I know. And she's like, how do you know that? And he's like, well, it was like the color of the journal you used to write it in high school. It was also the color of your prom dress and the color of your little backpack. He remembered all of that. And this girl thought that he did not know she existed. <laughs> Are you not soft for that? Because I, I swooned. I swooned. Anyway, four stars, love contract. Then I started this series that I had never seen anywhere before. I just randomly picked it up on my Kindle because I, I had gotten like to the point of the month where nothing was working for me. I was reading several different books. Like I would read like five chapters of a book, be bored, put it away. Three chapters of a book, be bored, put it away. And I did that with like seven different books. So nothing was working. The only thing that breaks me out of that kind of slump is mafia. I don't know what that says about me, but it's the only thing that gets me out. So I picked up this random series. It's called the Perfectly Imperfect series. I read Painted Scar and I read Broken Whispers and they're both by Neva Altaj. Again, never heard of this author or this series whatsoever, but I just randomly picked it up and I had a really good time with those two books. I don't know if I'm gonna be continuing the series, if I'm gonna be honest with you. And by I don't know, I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> Like I enjoyed it enough for what I needed it to do. I needed to, it to break me out of my slump and I just needed it to be entertaining enough. And that's what it did. And now I'm good. <laughs> Painted Scars follows Roman and Nina and it's dual POV. And then Broken Whispers follows Mikhail and Bianca and it is also dual POV. Both of them are like dark mafia romances, Russian, Italian, a little bit of both. I rated Painted Scars 3.5 and then I rated Broken Whispers 3.75. So like I said, they were good to me, but they just weren't like, oh my God, I'm dying. The same kind of like I was telling you about the broken, the broken wife. The wrong wife, the wrong bride. <laughs> I liked it, but I'm not like obsessed. It did what it had to do for what I needed it to do, but now I'm moving on. Anyway, if you're gonna read these, search up your trigger warnings because they are dark mafia romances. You've been warned. While we are on the subject of dark romances, let's talk about Where's Molly by H.T. Carlton. We all know I like H.T. Carlton over here, okay? I feel like you either love her or you hate her. I really, really like her books. They just do it for me. They're just entertaining in the most like fucked up way possible. <laughs> and Where's Molly is no different. This follows Cage and Molly. If you read, the cat and mouse duet by her. In the second one, you get some like journal entries from Molly. So you meet her there a little bit and this is her story. So it's a little bit of a spinoff. You don't have to read the cat and mouse duet to be able to read Where's Molly, but it will spoil it for you. If you remember stuff, like if you're not the kind of person that will remember it later, then totally go for it and read this one and then read cat and mouse. But if you want to read cat and mouse and you want to be surprised and like shocked by the plot and all of that, read that first and then read Where's Molly because things will get spoiled. This is such a short book. Like it's like 200 pages of pure unhinged chaos in the funnest way possible. Molly 
is so strong. Like she was my favorite part of this book. Like it was her story. Cage was just there. You know what I mean? He was he was just there backing her up. You know that one sound that's like, there she is. She looks beautiful and gorgeous and amazing. And he's there. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. I love Cage a lot, but it was mainly Molly that I was focused on. I, I don't even really know what to tell you about this book. It feels like a Criminal Minds episode. She went through some really rough stuff in her life and she met Cage along the way, but they had a one night stand and have not talked ever since. Now they meet again. She's literally at her pig farm. Yeah, she has a pig farm. He shows up and she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's like, delivering a body for you, for you, to, for you to feed to your pigs. And that's their reunion. None of this is a spoiler either because HD literally posted all of that on her stories and like her Instagram and stuff. That's literally the plot of the book. Isn't that fucking crazy? Like that feels like a Criminal Minds episode. I'm pretty sure there was a Criminal Minds episode where like there was a pig farm going on. Am I going insane? I feel like there was. I need to search that up because I just, I know it. Oh my God, see? Pig farm, Criminal Minds episode. Lucas Turner, oh my God, yeah. This episode, the hunt leads them to a pig farm where it's determined that the murderer has been feeding the victims to the pigs. <laughs> That's essentially this. <laughs> And I loved it, loved it so quick, but at the same time, didn't feel rushed. Like I felt like the story was fully developed, even though it was so, so fast. If this book was like, I would say 400 pages and I was able to get more of Cage and Molly, it had the potential to be a five star, but because I didn't get all that much, it definitely wasn't a five star, but I loved it. So I would say 4.25 for Where's Molly. Yes, chef's fucking kiss. Sergio Pacheco Warning's dark romance. Then I read The Problem with Dating by Britney Cherry. We all know I love me some Britney Cherry. I will read anything this woman writes, okay? And The Problem with Dating is her newest release. So of course I have to read it. Of course I have to read it, I have no choice. This follows Alex and Yada and it's dual POV. And it is a small town, fake dating, grumpy sunshine. Did I get you or did I get you? All the perfect tropes. This feels like a 2000s rom-com. That's what it felt like as I was reading it. I just pictured 2000s rom-com. I have this playlist on Spotify that's 2000s rom-coms that I made and I was listening to that while reading this book and I had a time of my life. I would highly recommend. Yada is like been in the town forever. That is her town. That is her home and Alex is brand new. So it's like big city boy. Boy? Big city man coming to live in a small town. It's usually the other way around. So I really liked the dynamic of that. And then they start fake dating to kind of help with Yada because she has an ex that will not leave her alone and to help with him because the town hates him and he needs a little bit of brownie points, okay? Like I said, grumpy sunshine, fake dating, small town, everything you need and more, Britney Cherry, yes. Every single one of her books though, I will say they definitely have a little gut wrenching, like a little stab you a little shot to the heart moment. So search a trigger warnings for her books, but this one was the lightest one, in my opinion. This one and the Holly Dates are her lightest books and they're also my favorites. So do with that information what you will. I loved this, loved this, 4.25. Yes, pretty cherry, mwah. And lastly, we are going to talk about my favorite read of the month. The only five star I gave, like I told you, I'm picky with my five stars. I'll give four stars, but I'm very picky with the fives. And this book deserves everything and more. I'm not gonna shut up about it. So read it, read it, or else it is a love letter to whiskey by Candy Steiner. Now, this book is on Kindle Unlimited. Do not read this version. Do not, I repeat, do not read this version because you will be missing stuff, okay? Read this version, read this version, the white one. Do not read this one. The white one with the gold letters that says fifth anniversary edition, that's the version you read, okay? Because there's a lot in the, like the end that you'll get that you do not get in the other version. Anyway, this book follows Jamie and B and it is right person, wrong time. It is miscommunication. It is cheating. It has every trope I hate. Why did I love it? Why did I love it? That's how you know the writing is good because I rated this five stars and it has every single trope I hate. Right person, wrong time is like one of my least favorite things in the entire world. It just pisses me off, okay? But basically B and Jamie meet when they are really young. I think they're in high school. Immediately there's a connection there, but they proceed to quite literally date every other person and be at different steps of their lives throughout years and you get to follow that. Tell me that doesn't make you wanna die, but why was it so good? They just were so meant to be and I just understood them so much and felt so deeply for them. And even though these characters pissed me off, like I hated them so much, I also loved them so much and I cheered for them. I also wanted them to die, but I also cheered for them. So a lot of emotions were had and that's how you know the book is good. So love letter to whiskey, five stars. The writing is phenomenal. The book is phenomenal. Everything you go through for the first 373 pages of this book will be made up because of this 
because of this right here. Everything that happens in this, it just so makes up for everything that happens in this that I just cannot explain to you. And that's why you need to read this edition because this edition has this. The other edition does not have this extra stuff. So you really, really need these like extra 200 pages, I promise. And it'll just make you feel so much better for everything that the author just put you through. So she will kill you and she will throw you off a bridge and she will step on you and she will run you over by a bus. But then she'll pick you back up and she'll put a little bandaid on you and she'll be like, there, there. And you'll be like, okay, that was great, five stars. I even made a playlist for it. That's how you know I love it. That's how you know I love it. When I make a playlist for a book, I'm obsessed with it. So I will not shut up about it. It's definitely my favorite standalone right now. Probably gonna be my favorite standalone of the year. So that's a big statement, but go read it. Okay, I'm leaving out. I've talked for so long. I feel like I, I don't know how to form words anymore. You know, when you just hear yourself talk nonstop that your voice starts to sound like it's fake, that's me right now. Like my voice is not really my voice. Anyway, have such a good day. Let me know what you read. Let me know your favorite book. Let me know your least favorite book. Let me know which ones out of that list you're going to read and which ones maybe you hated. I don't know. Keep things spicy. Let's do it. Good for us though. I feel like we, we did the damn thing. I feel like we really read a decent amount of books this month. Good for you. You look happy and healthy. Oh my God. Did I tell you guys I'm seeing Olivia Rodrigo? I did. I feel like I told you that. Okay. Have such a good day. If this is your first time here, I'm so sorry. Please stay. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you.